Joel Com here at South by Southwest with the one and only John Nasta. He is a digital health philosopher, a DHP, maybe the world's first to my knowledge. John, buddy. You got to call Good me doctor now because a, doc a, a DHP is almost like a PhD. It is. So there. I just uh, got another credential. This boom. Is, you're brilliant. Like that. I love that it. That just I happened. Think we're done. What is a digital health philosopher? Uh, what is that? Uh, I explain. Know, Help me. My mind we, is. We live running. in interesting times. We do. We live at a, an, an inflection point of human history in that the evolution of technology, the desire to reform healthcare, the uh, issues around an aging population, the issues of an empowered group of people, the personification of the, of the empowered patient, is all coming together. And things are going to change. They're going to change in a very, very big way. Now, it quickly too, right? Very I mean, fast. That's like, exponential like, growth. That's this whole Peter Diamandis exponential growth and changing. Are now, we talking about change to the, the type of rapid change that happened when Apple came out with the iPhone 2007? Because like everything totally changed. Yeah. Like that kind of change? I'll tell you. I'll give you an example. Okay. okay? Let's go back 100 years. I don't go back that far. We've got to, because you know what happened in the year 2000? Nothing. Y2K didn't happen, right, right? right? Go back to the year 1900. What happened? Nothing. 1915. What ah, happened in 1915? World War I. Okay. Theory of relativity. The ability to look into the sky and see an airplane. And having that sense of wonder that this is the reality in which I live and my children will live. We are seeing that now. And interestingly, you said the smartphone is a 2007 invention. Right. 2015 is the functional or practical beginning of this century. You are so passionate and you talk with your hands so much and I love it. So what do you what is it that we're going to see like physically as as consumers, as tech geeks, you know, the Apple the watch is coming out and they they kind of make you, it a big deal. I don't get it. I'm not when we talk about digital health, right? Yeah. Digital health is sort of little it's a little bit like Digital fitness, you know, wear a tracker, go to the gym. Digital wellness, I'll track my weight. Digital health, I'll worry about how healthy I am. And digital medicine. So there's really this, this continuum. And we're going to see fundamental shifts in the ability to diagnose a heart attack two weeks before it happens. Wow. So nanoparticles. And don't believe me, look where Google is putting their money. Look where Craig Venter, the first man to sequence the human genome, is putting his money. Look where big tech companies are spending their dollars, 23andMe, looking at genomic analysis to drive drug development. So we're seeing the ability to, to just change the way we practice medicine. Now, patients will be empowered, so you can take control of your data, your life, your genomic profile, and help craft a plan to help you stay well, to help you live to 100, 150. Right. Digital health is about longevity. It's about living longer. It's about detecting a heart attack, cancer. Before Please don't point to me present. when you say that word, because right. that's like, yeah, I don't... But, you know, we, we stage cancer now as stage four, <laughs> stage right. three. You know, we use our hands to feel for a lump. That's right. barbaric. Right. We can use nanotechnology now to find the very first cancer cell in your body and find it at stage zero. Well, here's the deal. I just turned 50 last year. You know what they yep. told me I got to do, right? And you do your virtual colonoscopy with your... Uh, uh, with a pill you swallow. They told me, so that's what I'd rather do. I mean, who wants to be roto rooted yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. what, what's the point of all that? You have to be a bit of a philosopher because you're talking about things like longevity and push on longevity and where do you go? You go to immortality. And immortality is no longer discussed as a kooky thing. It's discussed as a real reality because after a while, you're gonna replace my shoulder. You're gonna replace the valve in my heart. You're gonna put a, a little sensor in my brain. And I'm going to begin to exist a transhuman reality where and if you buy a lung you get a spleen free maybe so, no you grow your own you grow. 3d well, of course printing you is do. Gonna, well i don't I'm not, i don't yeah. want yours you know you know what the new donor is it's not an organ donor it's a data donor that's the new reality that we're going to take all our data and collectively analyze man like we did with the telescope like we did with the microscope and it's going to shift and evolve human evolution it's and extraordinarily important. in the future, they're going to look back at this video and they're going to go. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want you to do now yep. is mm -hmm. I want you to look right into the camera and I want you to give me a frank moment. House of Cards. I know you watch. Is the camera looking at me? Okay. House of Cards. Everything I learned on this show, I learned on the West Wing. 
<laughs> you know, for being put on the spot as the leading digital health philosopher. That wasn't bad. John Asta. Thank you, buddy. Thanks Always so a pleasure. much. Thanks.